Good evening and welcome to Between the Lanes. I'm Ron. I'm Shane. I'm Walker. And I'm Joe. Special guest Joe Ligori on episode number 82. And we're going to get to it. And again, welcome to Between the Lanes. This is episode number 82. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, Slot Racer is the channel. We now have 82 videos up there or shows, episodes. Um, some how-to videos and some special episodes that's been done along the way as well. Find us on Facebook, the page is Between the Lanes. Like us, say hello. And we have race results for last weekend. And before we start the winning report, we will talk about, because I don't have some pictures from, uh, a couple of these races I don't have pictures from. So uh, last weekend was the Barn Burner Wing Car Race at – uh, world famous Port Jefferson Speedway on the island, New York. Um, they ran PM and LMP early in the week. Uh, Can Am was won by Tony. Chubby was second. Doug Bauer was third. Um, LMP was run the following night. Justin was the winner. Don was second. Roger was third. I don't have last names because they didn't post last names. Uh, One Motor 12 was won by Roger. Justin was second. Matt was third. Billy 12 was won by Chubby, Hurricane Larry Pellegrini. I know that last name. Um, he was second, and Mylan was third. And two motor 15, uh, Doug Bauer was the winner. Keith Keeler was second. Walter Berg was third. Cobalt 12, Chubby was the winner. Uh, Walter Berg was second. Brandon Lee was third. 27 light, Chubby was the winner. Ed Gibson was second, and Jeff S. was third. Two motor open, Skinner was your winner, Andy Wasserman second, Hercules was third. And in the group seven open race, Brad Freisner was the winner, Skinner second, and uh, Timmy Skirka was third. And I got a message from uh, Danny, Danny, uh, me, Donnie Karen from Florida. And um, he sent this picture to me and he's like, okay, which car, which car would you say is ahead? <laughs> I'm looking at the picture and I'm like the car on blue. Yeah. Well, this picture's a little different from what in, in like in my messenger box somehow the picture was a little differently distorted or whatever and I was like well it's really hard to tell unless you're standing there and you can't tell because of photo camera angles. I said, but I think the red car is ahead looking at the picture that I looked. And then I held a I put a piece of uh, another piece of paper up, like making a finish line. Kind of thing. And I said, "Yeah, the red had just a just a very little over the blue car." And he goes, "Yeah, I kind of agree with you." But he says, um, "They picked the, they said the blue car won, and that was me, so I made the main." So, um, I'm like, okay. So at Fast Eddie's down in Pinellas Park, Florida, last weekend, they had the uh, Southern Six Hundred hard body stock car race, and those are the types of cars they raced. And the winner was uh, Corky Craver. Jake Speed was second, and uh, Karen Shrek. Shrek. Um, Shrek. And the little girl there, she's, I don't know if she's pointing to the sky or maybe. Uh, I think that's the number one. That's the number one, don't know. I was one of the main parts of giving Donnie his nickname Shrek. No, was you? Yeah. We grew up running with him. Yeah, he had a always wore Etney shoes, and they were notorious for making your feet smell. So we joked with him one time and called him Shrek, okay. and uh, it stuck, kind of like my Joe Dirt. Okay. Yes, us Florida guys were were weird. Now we know the rest of the story. <laughs> Penn Ohio Retro Series last weekend was at HMS of Bellevue, Ohio. Um, no pitchers in the Can-Am class. Greg, uh, Greg Fox was the winner. Mike Mir second. Steve Kep third. In Formula One, Greg Mayer was the winner. Greg Fox second. Steve Kepler was third. And in stock cars, uh, Bud Bardos was the winner. Steve Kep second. And Aaron Plosnick was third. And the US, USDRA had their uh, national races. This used to be the race that was always at Rick Blackson's place for many, many years. And this was at, um, what? Who's making that noise? 
I was scratching my head. Okay. The race was at Sorry. Innovative Slots and in South Side, or I guess not the South Side. Is that really the South Side of Indy? No, not. Well, I guess it is, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, it's it's on the yeah. south side of town, technically. It's it's inside okay. the loop. Yeah. But it's on the south side. It's south of seventy, so yeah, it's south side. So Yeah, and it's it's not too far from the south side of four sixty five. I mean it's only like three miles maybe at most. <laughs> okay. So they ran um all the class racing last weekend. And um they ran a lot of classes. So here we go. Limited dragster. Uh the winner and runner up was Anthony. Uh, Mastropalo, is that how we say his name, Joe? I have no idea. Well, if I, Anthony, if I messed up your name, I'm sorry, but top stock was won by Chris Wells and Brad Fink was second. The kind of pro stock was won by Chris Wells. Michael Coop Jr. was second. Super stock was won by Mike Knapp with Joey Newburn and the runner up. Can't say second in drag racing, that's a runner up. Factory mod. <laughs> Uh, runner was Joey Newburn, and runner-up was Stephen McCrory. Pro Mod was won by Stephen McCrory, and Mike Knapp was second. Uh, runner-up, kind of about said it again. Uh, the MMPS uh, winner was Todd McMillan, runner-up Michael Coop Jr. The um, single A funny car winner was and runner-up was Joe Bohannon. Uh, VRPS, the winner was Joey Newburn, and winner and runner-up was Joey Newburn. Newburn. Uh, VXPM, uh, Ken Handy Jr. was the winner. Runner-up was Ken Handy Sr., keeping in the family. Uh, VX Funny Car, Mike Knapp was the winner. Michael Coop Jr. was the runner-up. Double A Funny Car, um, they had 26 cars for that class. That was pretty That was pretty good. Wasn't the biggest class, but that was a lot of double A funny cars. <clears throat> Michael Coop Jr. was the winner. Ken Handy Jr. was second. The Furex Econo Pro Stock Challenge was won by Caden Fields with Michael Coop being second. The Lee Watson Single A Funny Car Shootout was won by Ken Handy Jr. Michael Coop Jr. was runner up. In the Innovative Slots Double A Funny Car Shootout, Franco was the winner, and the runner up was Joe Bohannon. That's a name I haven't heard very in a long time, really. Who, you don't Joe? hear very often. Yeah, because he used to run uh, Bullet Speedway. And, right. And when they sold it, they went to other people. And then Joe kind of, I thought, fell off face of the earth when it's locker room world. And well, I guess he's back running now. Well, he has a raceway, too, down in. Uh, oh, does he? Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Something, somebody's garage. I forget to. It's some. Uh, thousand apologies, Joe. I just can't think of the name of your. Raceway, but yeah, he opened up. I don't know in the last month or two. Really, is it down in like what Lexington, Kentucky, or something? I think it's, or? I think it's around Louisville. It's around we'll, Louisville. We'll find out and have more on next week's show. That's the. Uh, is that the drag place where they have yeah. that big drag race? Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's something garage. Yeah. But yeah, he bought a building to put his business in, and then they couldn't. Uh, something happened. So I'll turn into a race one. And, Okay, moving right along. Midwest Flat Track Series was at um, Mid American Naperville. And um, I have no idea who won the JRL race. Um, but in the uh, production, because they didn't put up any results. For it. So in production, uh, Dave Goth was the winner, Kevin Van Pelt second, Gary Gasport was third. In the Enduro class, Dale Leip was the winner, Cato was second, Ricky D in third. And then Open 12, Dale Leip was the winner, Kevin Van Pelt second, Ezra uh, Vosberg was third. And the B&E uh, Lost Town Challenge ran there later in the evening. And see, man, I got these messed up. So anyway, I don't, oh, that's because I don't have photos for that. That's why. Never mind. Um, Hobby Stock, Neil Eisler was the winner. Brian Meharry was second. Ken Eisler was third. And all I know about Dirt Late Model was that Neil Eisler won. And there was no other results put up for that. So then we go. Well, we got to go. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Hang on, guys. The other left. 
the right. <laughs> Mad Fast Racing was at American Adrenaline Speedway in Randleman, North Carolina. And in the truck class, Teddy Hoots was the winner, Jimmy Johnson second, uh, Dr. Carl, no, that's not <coughs> the other Carl. Big money. Carl Big Money Burrow was third. In the scale class, Big Money Carl was your winner, Jimmy Johnson second, and Dr. Carl Legaspi, the track owner, was third. DTM, Big Money Carl was your winner, Dr. Carl was second, Teddy was third, and that was the same podium in GTP with Big Money winning again, Dr. Carl second, and Teddy in third. That's my teammate. <laughs> which which one? Big money. That's my enduro That's teammate. That's enduro teammate. Yeah. Two yeah. Running. That's my teammate. Big money motorsports. Big juicy and big money. Big money. A couple of big boys out there. <laughs> big 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 all over the place. Sunday Sunday Sunday. Oh, Shane beat you all to it. I have. I didn't know I was allowed. <laughs> so this weekend we got the New England Retro Racing at Bristol 1010 up in Connecticut. Uh, we got uh, FNRS, um, National Series Race Number 2 at HMS Bellevue, Ohio this weekend. We've got JPM Series in South Bend, I believe, this weekend. And we have the Central Illinois Slot Series um, in Elkhart, Illinois. And Joe's going to that. That's pretty cool. That's a tiny town, but it's a pretty cool place. You got to go across the street and have lunch there. It's a pretty good place to eat. Yeah, come um, to find out, there's not much really going on in that town, but a slot car track. That and the trains. And I go, know the owner. That I didn't realize that I knew the owner. Oh, that and the trains that go by 80 or 90 miles an hour. Um, yeah. The following weekend, the weekend of the 16th and 17th, um, you've got the R4 race uh, at Columbus. Ohio at Tom Thumb Hobbies, got uh, Yuska, you've got Mid-America Hard Body Series at Mid-America, you got the Mid-South Series at the Slot Car Track Concord, kind of our last USRA Nats warm-up race, if you will. And the following weekend, we got the RMRRA at Straight Line Speedway, Wheat Ridge, Colorado, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Is that uh, a drag the, strip? No. Girls Speedway. Former 2000s at Lucky Bob's. BRS is at um, Carl Hoffine's Place. Race Rama. The OCC is at Washington, Pennsylvania. And the following weekend, last weekend of March, um, the only thing I got on the schedule right now is Retro East at Speed Zone. So that's what's coming up. And as usual, we will report. But um, yeah, at, Star at Straight Line Speedway in uh, Wheat Ridge, Colorado, um, a while back, uh, Matt Sheldon had bought the American King track that was in the Price's basement. And um, it was a past American King back in the day. So that's, that's where that King wound up. The King is now at Starlight or Straight Line Speedway in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. And that's a retro race, Joe. The R -M -R -A. Gotcha. So. I was going off the cliche name of straight line racing. Well, yeah. Well, they have a drag strip there, I think. So maybe they started out as a drag strip and added a king track. Right. But they have a Facebook page. And um, new stuff. Oh, boy. New stuff. <laughs> oh, goody. Oh, goody. I think it was last Sunday. Uh, the announcement of the new JK Hawk 11 motor is now available. Um, the drag motor. Um, and it's balanced, calm, tied, and wicked fast. Wicked. Wicked fast. So Drag use only. That's Recommended for drag use only. So all your questions have now been answered. So... Um, and a sad moment of the show, as usual, we have to do um, talk about somebody and their memory and their passing. Joe, you may know, maybe you, maybe you know uh, Robbie uh, McAuliffe from, mm. no? 
No, I don't think so. Well, he was a racer at um, Fast Eddie's because um, Fast Eddie post posted this. Okay. He posted that he had passed away, lost a uh, battle with cancer mm. last week. So um, prayers and thoughts to the family and um, the Fast Eddie's group is um, is mourning his loss. So um, Godspeed and rest in peace. And um, that's all. That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Sweet. Sweet. So, Walker. Why? What have you been doing down there at the track? I see the oval tracks going, like, under this major renovation. Oh, yeah. So, the oval has been spun 180 degrees. So the dog leg is now where the back stretch was, and the panel will be on the back. What was the back stretch? The straightaway. And uh, <laughs> this is like changing Darlington. Oh, it's it's confusing. Uh, like but Bristol. The, the the panel is now on the main, the big straightaway, and uh, the lap counter is also now on the big straightaway. And it is also being rerouted and rebraided. So let me get this right. The straight, the driver's panel will now be in the kinkless straightaway. Yes. Yes. The back stretch is now the front stretch. Yes. Like Could you just move, the, the, flag stand, that <laughs> just move the flag stand? easier? Just move the flag stand. So now, oh, yeah. so now when your cars fly off in the kink, they can hit the art on the wall. Well, yeah, but at least now we can have marshals all the way down that straightaway. Yeah, but then the marshals will not want to pick the cars up because they're going around there so fast. Uh, I mean, hard body cars are like two and a half seconds. Yeah, well, hard bodies. I'm talking about like. Well, I don't care about your four inch NASCAR. Super late models. I care about our weekly. Program. Well, that's, that's all good. It's all good. I'm just saying that when uh, you're running cars that are running 1.2 second laps. Oh, I mean, just don't wreck. I got to off. I said, it's just like a salad. Just reach your hand down in there and grab you out a tomato and pull it out of there. Yeah, go go Marshall and Lopin race. It's the same thing. It's just a finger. <laughs> you just get your wrist cut off instead of losing a finger. I've got scars on my finger from Marshall and Wing cars. That was I hated much fun. It. I hated Marshall and Lopin cars. It was terrible. And nobody I just won. did box 12s, and it got I got my finger. I was like, well, this is dumb. <laughs> Nobody wants to slow down, even when they hear the banging and the crash. Oh yeah, drive through the smoke, Cole. Yeah, right. Not down there, you. <laughs> yeah, just gotta hope it's not in your way. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Shift it's a clean track. Everything goes to the bottom. That's right. Yeah, yeah black and purple is the fastest. So you gotta stop for everybody. Yep. yep. It wasn't that bad. I mean, uh, guys have. Guys have to realize you have to give you have to give quarter and give respect to the guy that's faster than you. I'm telling you now, the B and C mains or the low mains in the Nats race on that track are gonna take at least two hours apiece. <laughs> Sometimes the slower mains are better because you don't have the fast guys trying to run balls out. Yeah, but they won't hey, let each other. Best race know. I was ever in was the C main at the Nats. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's just yeah. best race. I race like first, podium. got the turn marshal, and just got the kickback. That's why I like the I beat podium from so a C main before. So tell yeah. us about tell us about the four wide drag race, and how's that going? It's going pretty well. Uh, we just got the two outer lanes going now, but track seems really smooth. Uh, everybody likes it. Just got to get another timing system. So, kind of saving our pennies for that second timing system. So how? Okay. So did you get, did your dad get his four sets of lights in for? No. Whenever we order the other timing system, we'll get another tree. So are you guys doing four four wide racing yet or no? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're just, just doing have the lanes active, right? Yeah. That just lanes are active. No, there's no power or anything to them. We're just kind of using them as like staging lanes right now. Well, you said they were up and running. No, the outer two are. The inner two aren't. Oh, okay. Did you race the first time with the inner two? Or no. It's always the been outers? outers? 
Yeah, always been the outer two. Ever since the tracks been run up and running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Still a work in progress, but okay. So what? next week, Mid South is racing there. What's gonna? What classes are gonna race on what tracks? Um, we're gonna be racing four inch NASCAR, which we're gonna allow everything for Group Ten. So that's basically gonna be a Group Ten race uh, on the Cobra. GTP on the Cobra, LMP on the Cobra, four and a half inch scale on the trioval, and we're going to race production on the flat track after everything. Okay. You're running production with group 12 motors? Yeah, group 12s or Phoenixes. Yeah. How's the Phoenix compared to like a group 12 though? Uh, well, on the flat track, the Phoenix is way too torquey, so it's very hard to <laughs> – drive a phoenix on that track so you almost need to choke that thing versus choking a 12 yeah uh, it's they they're just they make the car act so funny because they're just so torquey well they have torquey and real light too it's yeah a bunch of weight out of the back of the car compared to like a 12 and mm -hmm. they stop on a dime right but they have like that real soft spot and then they just turn on and go and they yeah kind of smooth into it yeah, you so can't hear it to do it. Yeah, I mean it a group twelve production car. A group twelve production car is about two or three tenths faster. So mm. right. So it's remotely competitive, though. I mean, depending on if you have a good driver with the Phoenix yeah. motor versus yeah. your mid packer with uh, the twelve. So yeah. I mean, it's just to save cost on anybody who wants to try it. And anybody who's racing the class of the Nats already has twelves and whatnot. So. Right. Right. Are you, are you racing in that, Shane? Uh, no, I will not. What? Shane uh, is not racing until the Nats. No, I'll be I'll be up there this weekend, the ninth. What's up there this weekend? Nothing. Oh, you're gonna go. Oh yeah, you're, you're just coming to practice. Yeah, oh, I'm Timmy's gonna coming the, too, so I'm gonna, gonna be on the out. oval. I gotta tune my carburetor. Is all going to be running? Just sit in the trailer and rev it up. That's how you Yeah, that'll be running. We're down. racing on it tomorrow. On the old one. Yeah, racing it tomorrow. Okay, so. It's braided right now. Okay, okay, because you said it was getting braided and routed, and I didn't know how far yeah. along you were, I guess. Yeah, we got done routing it earlier, cleaned it again, and he's braiding it right now. Oh, that's right. You were following with the vacuum cleaner, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, they got a system. It works. How much did you pay your mom to take that picture? There's a picture? I'm, I'm yeah. not getting into this. I said, I haven't been on Facebook. I've, I've, I've been. It said on Facebook that he, had a, he paid his mom to take the picture to prove to everybody. I'm not, I, I'm not getting in this conversation because I, said, I haven't seen it. I haven't. Mad at me. I'm just what asking questions. <laughs> I just seen a post and I'm just asking. Oh, I, I paid her all of my love and compassion. Does she watch all the allowance money she was going to give you? <laughs> does she watch this show? His mom don't give him no allowance. His mom does. like to beat him for what his mom wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> He's all out of control now. His sister's out of the country. Uh oh. No, not really. I'm actually a little calmer now. I'm a little happier. You know, everything's a lot smooth sailing. Yeah, you got more food. Yeah. The only problem is. The only problem is, is now the cat is like <laughs> tormenting the house. Our cat's breaking everything, so. Yeah, see? Sister's not there to. Cat misses your wonderful sister. Oh, yeah. Get rid of the cat. Yeah, cat couldn't go to South Korea. Now we got eight. <laughs> I'm sure there's a Chinese restaurant that'll love the cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah we'll, just, we'll just sell it and buy a new one before she comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Walker, your sister is a wonderful, a wonderful person. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you think she is. She was. She was so great at dinner that night. I, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to bring up the conversations. There is no love because, loss between Walker and his sister. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, it's hilarious. It is. Oh, yeah. It's... Well, what's yeah. funny is, like me, I'll be over there drinking a beer, and I'll hear what she's like saying under her breath, die laughing, like Jesus. Walker's <laughs> over there making fun of someone, and she just defends that other person, like. 
And then it just starts the whole thing between her and him. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I was making fun of Russ because the Cowboys lost, and then she's over there. Like, <laughs> she's over there. You don't need to be making fun of him. Shut up. <laughs> okay? <laughs> You're a Panthers fan. <laughs> I'm not a Panthers fan. I'm a Saints fan. <laughs> So I'm a lot more pissed off than a Panthers fan. <laughs> Who that? Who that? Who that? I actually had a helmet painted up like a New Orleans Saints the year they beat the Indianapolis Colts in the Super Bowl. I wore it twice, won both races, and both times I got a lot of weird looks. So I decided to stop wearing it before I got my ass <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, people here don't like the Saints either, so. All right, so Joe, Joe also races real cars, sprint cars mainly, and you sack dirt champ cars. So what's, um, what's your um, plans and schedule look like this year, Joe? Real racing. Right. Yeah, the real racing. Right now the plan is the dirt silver crown. We have five or – we have six races scheduled with that. The first one in Terre Haute, Indiana. Currently I don't have a chassis, and we race in a month, so – Slot car. Uh, the manufacturer is about three months behind. Yeah, that's that's why I decided to go to the R4 next weekend because probably won't have a car to be working on. So looks like if we if we get it for that, we'll be we should be ready. If we get it about two weeks in advance, we should be ready. If not, it'll be the Indianapolis Fairgrounds for the Hoosier Hundred. And then we uh we kind of switched our sprint car program from running the dirt sprint car and now going back to pavement. That's kind of what I grew up running on down in Florida is mostly pavement. So kind of going back to that, just the dirt's okay. It's fun, but you know, we're kind of a little cleaner on the pavement and a lot less <laughs> rough driving because you got a lot of, uh, a lot of young kids who like to tear people's crap up on the dirt. So the pavement. Oh, it's the same on pavement. The wall. Oh yeah. It's and the not, same on not pavement. the sprint car world. Uh -huh. The sprint car world really is, is more of the, uh, the well, older people that are tired of the, the young kids tearing their crap up. So little, I've become a lot of the respect. old people. A little more respect, yeah. A little bit more because when you hit the wall going 130 mile an hour when it, on an asphalt track, it hurts. Yep. So yeah. kind of a little bit more respect there. And we got probably 15 shows with that scheduled. We're not sure when we're going to get ready. We just now purchased the engine for the car. So trying to get that car built in the meantime with the Silver Crown, which kind of takes our – most of our attention is uh, the Silver Crown deal. The wing sprint car is kind of just the the other item there for the sponsors to be happy about. Cool. Sweet. So, Mike, so as of right now, it's just just slot car racing uh, race this weekend and the next weekend. Then I don't know what else after that. Um, I'm not to figure it out. I was thinking about attending the FNRS race at Marks. The uh, Flexi Palooza. Flexi Palooza. But the, uh, one of the wife's co workers, one of her person whose desk right next to her is getting married. So that's the obligation for that weekend. <laughs> happy wife. Is it open wife. bar? Uh, I is hope. Is it open they, bar? Most likely it is with them. If not, uh, there'll be yeah. uh, open containers in your area. Well, that is yeah. that her friend up by Mark's? No, no, oh. this is, if it was, we would be gone up there, actually, but, you no, know, it's something she works with, so, okay. but, uh, you've been happily married, what, two times, Ron, once or twice? Just once, just once, that's all. Just you once. That's all you need. That's enough. That was enough. <laughs> that's enough. None of that happily married six times stuff? No, 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 no. <laughs> Lose half your stuff one time, that's all it takes. No. That's right. Just once, once was enough. It has its pluses and its minuses, just like everything in life. Pretty much. Like, she makes fun of me for talking with a bunch of dudes about toy cars on a podcast, so. I have, no, I have nothing against marriage. It just, you know, it works for people and some people that don't. And, you know, hey. I tell people I do a podcast. I just don't tell them what it's about. <laughs> oh, I'm not no. bashful. It's, it's grown men playing with toy cars. Yeah, I know. It's. They probably think it's a rap show with you. Yeah. Big Juicy's podcast. You have a hoodie and a ball cap on. I'm flat bill at that. Yeah. So that's, you're pretty baller there. Yeah. <laughs> he could have a haircut and we wouldn't even know it. Maybe that's why he's dressed like that this week. No. Nah, Maybe his hair looks me. like mine. Trust me, I got all my hair. <laughs> Still. 
Yeah, it's not going anywhere until after April. You should cut it into a mullet. I'll pay your entry in one of the classes if you cut it into a mullet. Oh, that's definitely worth it. Totally no. <laughs> Negatory, Big Ben. You'd have to you'd have to pay the entry in every class for me to even think about that. No, 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 no. Not, I'm not, not shaving the sides and the top. No. So you're all part shave of this part no, right no here. Business, just all parties. No. No. See, now I can just grow the skullet because of this. Here, I just get the skullet going. So. I, w I wish his yeah. sister was here. We could let her. We could hold him down. And let her cut his hair. She wanted to cut my hair before she left. I love her. I love her. <laughs> and I like. Hey, Ron, you know that marriage thing you're talking about? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Perfect woman. No, not that kind of. There's not that kind of love. No. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. That. We're hoping that she finds somebody while she's in Korea and stays. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. when you say <laughs> so that we don't have to pay you, for her. When you say we, who is we? Me, my dad, and my mom. We really? just don't want to pay for. Her. <laughs> your dad looked. We kinda, don't have to. Just leave your dad her. looked a little teary-eyed when he dropped her off at the airport. Oh no, he was just tired. Trust oh, me. Those were tears of joy. Just tired. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe they were tears of joy. <laughs> <laughs> he was just tired. And you know what? They, up early. they probably wish they could put you on a plane somewhere, too. Oh, they can next year. Fly with me to California. Yeah. Oh, no. That ain't happening. The whole family's got to go. They got to bring the cat. You got to bring everybody. Everybody's got to go to California. Nah, so maybe, your sister will fly in. maybe your sister will fly in from South Korea to California and y'all hook up, and it'll be a It'd be closer with the flight. No. Yeah. I'm not doing that. West Coast Family Reunion. No. 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 So I like started saying. Said, oh. What? I was going to say your dad said it's. Told your dad to call me whenever he was leaving to head to California, and I would call him when I got on the plane, and we'll see who gets there first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, he's. I told him I would go to a plane, and I will fly to California, and he can drive all of my stuff there if he wants to. I mean, if that's the case, I would drive <laughs> to Charlotte, because American Airlines, out of Charlotte, direct flight. Yep. Direct flight. It'd be our look. The RV would break down, though, and we'd be at a track with no stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'd be calling Ron, dude, you got to next day some stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I need um, bodies. Middle of middle of Arizona or something. Middle of the desert broke down. Can't ship nothing. So, a question for Shane and Walker, because Joe too, I guess, because he watches the show. Have we ever discussed setting up like guide heights on the show? Uh, the very, like very Jasper, first though. show, you and Ralph spoke about the guide height whenever you were doing the episode on Braid. Okay. Because Mike Fleming wrote and said we should do a show or discuss on the show setting up notes, and, I, and he goes, maybe you guys have already talked about it. And I'm thinking, yeah, we did, but. So it was the, one of the first, I'd say one of the, I would say between show one and ten, y'all talked about braid and guide height and stuff like that. Okay. Well, I, I asked me what we talked about that. last week. I have no clue, but. I don't know yeah, what I talked about last week either because I didn't. Something watch it. I don't understand is the sanding of the guide flags because you're running on the braid. Nine times out of ten, your braid gets jacked up instantly. So sanding of the guide flag, what exactly is the purpose? Is it kind of like balancing the tires thing where some people do it because they think it helps? Well, okay, so okay, I mean this is, if okay, like if you get that little bump on the bottom of the guide from the dimple of the braid. Mm -hmm. And let's let's say that's ten. Let's say it's a ten thousandths bump. Even though your braid's on that bump, you're still that's still going to put enough that car ten thousandths up in the air. I mean, because it's all riding in the slot. Yeah, but still, that goes back to setting the chassis height of your tuning of it, which is like your, you know, the wear pattern on your outriggers. Well, no, I understand that wing. too. So it kind of is that same principle. Then after, you know. 15 20 laps on the braid it kind of flattens itself back out right per se. right yeah but like say it's 10 thou on one side and only like five on the other 
then it's yeah. uneven. Right, might cause you to tip or something more on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I can't guess. Figure out what's wrong with it. Well, always, I mean, if you look, if you look at, at the front of some guides, are they're like that? They're not even yeah. flat. They're, right. Yeah, but some some guide tongues on cars are twisted. You know, you get them yeah. where yeah, you have to flatten them out. I mean, there's right. so many different variables and the different heights of the braids on some tracks that they fixed in some spots. So maybe I'm not as much. I mean, there used to be a track we raced that, that like orange up to red, I would run a thicker braid and then orange down to black, I would run a thinner braid because it was just that much different in recess. Yeah, wow. we just ran a track that's pretty variable braid depth. Um, it's no. been one of the hardest to tune. <laughs> yeah, it's got some spots that's been repaired. And it's still it's still a really fast track for for what it is and the age of it. But it's one of them hard ones to tune, so you always just kind of run your car up in the air as much that's as you just can. Like, uh, and it still work. The track y'all have, Walker from Anderson, Anderson yeah. Trioval, the lead on turn, they rerouted it, and it was like thirty thousandths, and the rest of the track was ten. <laughs> Hmm. So that was like that track. You raced on it too, probably at the Nats in Anderson. I didn't race. I was there, but I didn't race. Yeah, I was talking to Joe too. Or Joe's man. No, I was supposed to. Joe go wasn't to at that never, night. No, I was supposed to go to a Southern USRA race there one time right. and never did. Right. I was too yeah, young. Like, I got in trouble. I just told the guys they were like they were like, "How are you adjusting for that turn?" I'm like, "Just wide open." carry momentum you know? <laughs> yeah. well that's like with, yeah. at Fort Wayne you know my LMP car no matter what I did to it it drove the same but I just kept adding guide space or adding guide space or get it up off the track and it just kept getting faster and faster yep. I think I ended up adding 25,000 from the first time I set my car on the track to the car and got it way up in the air and it just got even better so I was like well it drives the same on every lane so see my standard rule of thumb is add 40 yeah, see, I, Cross I just added board. 25 on it. I didn't add 40. Am I, I think I added 35 to my Can-Am. Well, that's what it was. Funny. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's only five fell off. Yeah. But uh, I run my front wheels up on my Can-Am anyways, up to where they're not really on the track. Right, not running so, hard. So, yeah, not running hard on it. I, my F1 cars, I'll run hard on the front wheels. But my Can-Ams, I just keep them up in the air and as much as I can if they get down in it. You know, sometimes certain spots I feel they just get too tight. Right. Yep. I don't know nothing about retro cars. It'd be like Terrible. your hard body cars, just faster. Yeah. And, and way more fun. Better. <laughs> I ran retro one time. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think you want to be main there, Shane. I, I was a proud car owner that day. I mean, I've drove one, but that's about as far as I got. <laughs> I went to Atlanta to race GTP and ended up racing everything. Yep. Well, so here, run your, this. Did okay. you run Joe's car in F1 or my car? I ran, well, uh, James had me an F1 car. I had to supply the motor, yeah. the motor that I had, and it wasn't up to par. And then you were like, I have this car if you want to try it. I ran it. It was like a tenth faster. I was like, I'll just run yours. <laughs> that's when the tape was getting wrapped around the axle, pulling it tight and locking it up. And we thought the gear was loose. I think I finished yeah. second in that. Yeah, and then you ran my backup Can Am car and you yeah. won the B main with it. I think you ended up like sixth overall, fifth overall, something like that. Yeah, I don't even yeah. remember. That so car long. drove that car drove pretty good, yeah. just like mine had a faster motor in it and was one of those too lazy to change to try to get better, but yeah, yeah, because I remember y'all gave me the cars and I just put them up in my box and y'all were like, y'all ain't gonna try them. Like, nah, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, it, it handled good. And you're like, okay, yeah. that's cool. Nah. <laughs> he broke his record. I, I, I don't intentionally tear up stuff. I'm normally pretty good with it. Have you raced retro? Right. Huh? Has Walker raced retro yet? No, I've only drove one. I've never raced one. Okay. Yeah, I so went there just to race on, GTP uh, and to meet you, and then it was just like, all right, I guess I'm racing everything now. He was there to race wanna, GTP, not me. I want to race retro on the MTT. I was there to meet you, too. The whole reason why I went. Okay. It's all about you, Ron. Just Ron. Oh, Joe was there, too. 
I've already met Joe, though. That's what me yeah. and Joe are <laughs> educated on skinning and flaying and catching. And Fishing with Foster. Fishing with Foster. Nothing better than it. I think it'll be a whole new show. I told him that. He he just always tells me, shot Ron, shot Ron. <laughs> yeah, he's been – him and I, every time we talk about fishing, he's like, you need to come on up. And it's like, you know, it's like dude, I'd love to, but it's like five-hour drive to go fishing and I'm not really into that right now. <laughs> <laughs> can't go fishing i can't see a inch down in the water oh it's not that bad i've been i've been about six miles offshore and you can actually see the bottom in about 40 foot of water when i was living down in florida we'd go offshore yeah, fishing. I was gonna could, say, on some clear days you could see the bottom yeah i wish you can when it stops raining but <laughs> not right now <laughs> so any any other nets news updates or anything uh I talked to uh, Steve Forsyth. Him and Jonathan will be there Saturday. What? Uh, okay, so I, okay, here's a question for you. Did your mom? Because when I, we were down there for the FNRS race, mm-hmm. your mom had talked to the local travel tourist people, like the uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what you call that, welcome wagon or something. But yeah, has she talked to them since? Because they were gonna. Yeah. Yeah, they were here today. Uh, okay. So basically, um, <laughs> what they're going to do is like whenever the event, whatever event is going on, they're going to put us like they're going to put our names, like all of our big events, like the Nats will be in a calendar at like certain hotels okay. around like the Speedway. And we'll have coupons and stuff in hotels for like 20% off rentals stuff like that so it's pretty okay. cool okay well did they get us any deal on hotel rooms anywhere no uh not that i, I don't know i okay. don't know anything about that but you need, you need to find out so you can let people know yeah okay. i'll uh i'll figure that out but i'm pretty sure they're putting stuff in like hotels and whatnot so that's really good for us because then it lets people know that we're here well that'll yeah, work, yeah, work all year round i mean yeah, it's free advertising. Two hotels, you know, and they'll probably give you a discount or something. Yeah. Yeah, if you can tell them they get like 10, 15 rooms or something like that, usually the hotels will give you a little bit of a break. Right. Yeah. You've got your driver's license, right? Well, oh, yeah. Well, so you could have a shuttle from the track to the hotel. They could call and say, I want to come play. We'll send our shuttle <laughs> bus right over. Yeah. Get you a little sprinter van. Yeah. Drive the sprinter <laughs> van over and load them in. You go over and pick them up. I'll just pick them up in the DeVille. The DeVille? Yeah, be blaring some hip hop. <laughs> Get some Snoop Dogg. The bag DeVille. Yeah, yeah, I can see you as an Uber driver, just Ubering <laughs> all around town. <laughs> With a DeVille. <laughs> Little Coot DeVille. You can him and his sister to be a uh, tag team. Mm. Uh no, her passenger her passenger door doesn't open from the outside. So, as long as the window opens, you're fine. Just climb into the side. <laughs> uh, that's another climb problem. Into the window. <laughs> they can yeah, come in through the, the window. <laughs> there you go. Concord. There you go. All right. Anybody else got anything? We got a couple. We got some giveaways. What are we giving away? Well, we're gonna give away. And you know what? Roger can choose what he's going to send to whoever. Anyway, because there's like, what is there, four different styles of HP guides now. There's Pompa, Graphite, Pompa, Nylon, and the Tapered Flag, Nylon, Tapered Flag, Graphite. <laughs> he wants to give away a guide and a nut. To four I some axles. So, I don't so know. There, there's an, another question I have. I see he promotes metric guide nuts. Yeah. Is that because of people are having trouble threading the 1032 nuts on them, or what's? I uh, I keep a 1032 tap in my box to run through most of my guide nuts. You buy the Sonic ones, you have to run a tap through them for them to fit on the guide flags. Okay. Well. Okay. So. When you thread something, there's fine pitch and there's coarse, coarse thread, fine pitch, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 
most guide nuts that are made in America are 1032. Yeah. Which we know that. Okay. Now, the guide threaders that are made out of the country have a metric thread. Mm. Okay. Now, if you thread, I see this joke as you're, if you thread your guide with a, with a 1032 tap, or no, 1032 die, excuse me, because we're, we're threading now. Yeah. That takes a die. If you, if you thread your guide with a 1032 tap, and then you put on the American made nut, it goes on there really nice and easy, like there's no friction. Yeah. That, that's probably a thread, that's probably a metric. That's a threading tool. Yeah, that's a 1032 yes. threading tool. But is it actually 1032? I believe so. That's a, ooh, that's an old Cohoza one. No, that'd be, that, would, that, would be a, that would be a metric thread. So, yeah. so, so, 1032 so tap. Okay. Right in. It is unless it's a lot, unless it's slightly bigger, it okay. could be slightly bigger and still be the same pitch. Um, because if you put the metric threaded, if you put a metric, if you put an American threaded nut like on a metric threaded guide, mm -hmm. you've got friction to where it's, it's, it tightens itself. You know what I'm saying? It stays tight. Yeah. Yep. Where, like if you put a 1032 nut on a 1032 screw or bolt, it, it just threads on and off with no friction. So there's nothing there unless you, unless you, you should leave a little extra. So when you thread down the last couple of threads, kind of cut their own threads into the guide flag to keep the nut from backing off. So that's, that's where the confusion gets like, because if you take Dude, a, I always, I run my nuts where they're kind of loose, but I just put fingernail polish on them usually. Right. A lot of the stuff now, like the nylon nuts, you don't have to because they kind of stick themselves. But anytime I use like a, a brass guide nut, if it comes loose, I just stick a little fingernail polish on mine. Right. But I like them kind of peel right off. And I, I don't like running the nut that's super tight on the guide because it kind of wants to twist the post a little bit. So it just wants to put more fatigue to it, I feel. Well, you just have to go easy. But I, mean, I don't. Mm -hmm. know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's that's where all this kind of gets confusing. So anyway, just don't hit anything. <laughs> yeah, just don't hit anything. You're fine. Yeah, just don't hit anything. And that works until they come out right in front of you, you know, and you don't have no time to that. Unlike Shane. What I do? I came off of the donut. I was yelling. Oh at yeah. The donut. You still hit me. Yeah, I yelled at you. <laughs> It was funny. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> like I, everyone I'm racing, you're the last one I thought I would hit. So I don't know who's who's what who's going to get what type of guide. I'll let Roger and the winner decide that. But the winners have to contact Roger Schmidt on Facebook because that's where he sees all his messages. He finds and whoever them. wins that doesn't want these, they can forward the winnings to me. I will gladly take anything. So four winners get a guide and a nut each. One guide, one nut, contact Roger Schmidt. Mm. Four winners. Four winners. Winner number one is Danny Hamby. Danny Not Hamby. Not going to get that one. Huh? Danny watches he'll, he'll get. Yeah, I was going to say, he'll, he'll get that. He'll want that. Shane said he won't be the one getting it. Winner number two is Jordan Temple. I don't know who that is. Huh? I don't know who that is. He's an East Coast who, who runs retro and flexi cars. Like up in Connecticut in that area. Yeah. He the NERR race this weekend. Uh, the third winner is Robert Neal, which, sorry, Robert, um, not a name I'm familiar with. but That's uh, a... That's a Thobbert right there. <laughs> That's no, some beautiful it's handwriting. <laughs> My chicken spread. And the nice. final winner. Stu Martyr. There's a there's a weak there's a name. Stu Martyr. So Stu oh. Martyr and Robert Neal and Jordan Temple and Danny Hamby. Get a hold of Roger at Mid America or on Facebook, Roger Schmidt, and uh, tell him you want a guide and a nut. 
And he'll and send Shane, you, I have a he'll send you the guide and, and then Walker will show up on your doorstep. Good night. I'll send these no. to you, Shane, since you needed guide flags. A nice Parma non cut down and a I got some Parma trend. ones. Oh, I've got about a thousand of those non cut. Which one? There you go. The Parmas. The Parmas. Using them to build drag cars. Do y'all have red foxes in stock? Yeah. All right. We got plenty. Beautiful. Have you, okay, so here, okay, it's Mr. Drag Racer, new drag racer. Not new Not drag me. racer. I did it three years ago, okay? Okay. okay. He's right. always <laughs> ran around the house in his sister's shoes. Nothing new about that. He's got the hair to go with it. Having a heyday with her in Seoul or in Korea. South Korea. All right, so, Mr. Drag Racer. Oh, boy. Have you tested different guides on the same drag car to see if any guides are faster in a straight line than others? Uh, I really don't think it'll matter because you're not turning, but no, I haven't tried. Okay, that was the question. Other than the weight. So maybe I'll give you a home. That's your homework assignment. Well, okay, so there is one thing. Um, I had a Starburst guide on my – on a car, and the – or the uh, – guide down in the slot wasn't deep enough and the car wouldn't register and i couldn't figure out why it wouldn't register and then i changed guides and that was it so don't run a starburst guide on your drag cars or sand some off the bottom no it was too yeah don't sand anything off the bottom it yeah, was too, it was too short it, wasn't, it, it, didn't it didn't go down deep enough yeah it didn't go oh. down deep enough to trip the laser oh yeah Gotcha. You would you would think maybe a longer guide would be better on the drag cars because would with the, change your um your stage. when the car goes a launch and wants to lift up and it would change the, the staging light too a little. Well, and you could roll a little bit too before it. Right. Because yeah. that's well, the, like, that was a really main drag race a long time ago because somebody went somewhere where they had like a two inch long blade. Yeah. They could really get they could go before the it was, light. It was hard to red light. Let's put it that way. Yeah, you could cheat um, some, and they could leave. Yeah, um, well, like I have a front wheel drive car, and it has two guides on it, so it doesn't spin out. Is it a and Honda? No, it's a Citroen. Ah, uh, I wish it was a CV. Honda. No, uh, somebody else has one. It's a Rabbit, but um, <laughs> that's close. Yeah, that's pretty good. They have two guides on theirs too. Yeah, yeah, you have to, or else it'll spin around. What if uh, you have to have you have to have one in the front and one behind it. What if, behind. You, lock, what if you lock the guide solid where it didn't move? It, it doesn't matter. It still it's spin still, out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a long so, time, long time ago, we took it. I'll sorry, interrupt. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the old one piece JK four and a half and made it a front wheel drive, and it was pretty fast until it came out of the slot, and then it got a lot faster, all the way into the. It was in the kink on a. Uh, that tracks down a Palace Park, and it basically wadded the whole car up. We we're like, well, that was fun for a while. <laughs> Carry on. So yeah, um, that's your homework assignment in the next week or two. All right. Well, I'm just not going to do it like Shane doesn't do his. So What did I do? <laughs> you didn't go to uh, that one Mid-South race to test motors. Well, you never gave us the motor brush report. Yeah, the motor brushes. Well, I mean, they're still in the cars. <laughs> maybe it was a big secret. He doesn't want to tell us. Yeah, maybe. Maybe some people know and some people don't. And you were part of the some people who don't. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. Was that that? I don't care. Were those brushes you were telling me about the other day there, Shane? Yeah. The one that you cut down like half the brush off? <laughs> I get my brushes from the DMW or whatever it is. DMW. All right. So, Walker. What? What's going to be the secret word of the show? Or secret word? The magic word. Magic. Um, I say trioval. Trioval. Okay. Yep, you got trioval tri on your brain. I can't uh, wait yeah. to go up there this weekend and try it out now that it's going to be freshly rebraided. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll be faster. So when the trial gets done, now what track are we going to start working on? 
Uh, the drag strip again to get all four. Actually, the truck tractor and tractor pull. pull. Yeah, the truck and tractor pull. Yep, because Dad's going Friday to go pick up the uh, sled Split. and a truck yes. in Tennessee. So shocking, Tennessee has those. It's it's the. Uh, did you see? Did you ever see that live video I shared where they were doing a tractor? Oh, pull? they're awesome. Like, don't make fun of them. They're cool. It's the oh, I just like watching them burn like. down. At Bullet yeah. Speedway in Louisville, they had the track pool. Yeah, like the pool thing. They had that going down at uh, Tri-State before they closed. Yeah. Did they? It's, they're fun. Uh, at least they look like they're fun. I got about a thousand old motors, so I'm I'm ready to burn some down. Get some old Death Stars and have some smoke shows. Yeah, I got a ton of 502s. What kind of controller you go. use for that? Just a regular controller? No, the truck goes by itself. You don't need a controller. You just, no? no, you, you got to have a controller, yeah. You got to power the – got to power it. Okay. Yeah, you got to be able to drive it. The sled yeah. kind of adjusts by itself. But what, yeah, kind of, what, you you use, yeah. what do you think they use for weight? Just regular weight or you think they would – Yeah, do? it's just – it's. I think it's just lead, like a lead block or something. I was going to say, you could probably be expensive, but get uh, – what's the stuff in race cars I can't think of? Tungsten. Tungsten. Yeah. Yeah, I need some of that for some drag cars. Got to buy a bunch of little pieces. I know some um, people that have their RC cars that use tungsten strips to hold the batteries in to try to get some more ballast on them. Them on the three hundred dollar piece of tungsten. Yeah, same, same amount of weight, just in a smaller space. Hmm. Yep. Maybe yep. scaling my car out this weekend. Oh, that was <laughs> you know that's something we'll talk about next week. Oh boy, scaling slot cars. Because I was going to bring it up a mine, couple of shows uh, ago, and then wait. yeah, there's a guy that went and bought a bunch of little scales for his hard body car, and he sets it up like a big car. How's that it work? Works for percent him. of cross weight and go it for it. It works for him. Yeah, you know, it works. So. Dang. Well, until next week. We thank Joe Liguori for coming on the show. Maybe, maybe he'll be on another show now. That he, now that he knows how to do, we might be able not be able to get rid of him. No, he could be no, my fill-in. There you go. Walker, can I be on the show this week? No, I'm just teasing. Ah, uh, no, no. I've done my one show for now. I'll wait until at least a week. It's not that bad. No. The first one's got like ah, uh, like you get a couple in, it's just like whatever. Yeah, I'm happy with it because it gets me away from everything. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. I, I usually watch maybe 50 to 60% of a show. Like, I'll fast forward through some of the stuff. You're like, eh, whatever. But, like, when you get to some of the topics that are talking, it's worth listening to. Some yeah. of the race results, me, we'll I just kind of thumb it. through those real quick. So we try and keep it interesting, but some weeks we just don't. Yeah, like, you didn't race, I didn't race, so it's just kind of like yeah. you know, the topic's kind of quiet week. Right. Yeah. I've just been busy yeah. with business and – but it's starting to get warm, so construction's getting busy down here. Yep. So yeah, yeah. Next week then, you'll have three of us at three different events, so might have some good topics. Yeah, yeah I'll be testing. Yeah, I'll You'll be there, be Walker. Of you. Yep. Are you racing at HMS, Randy? Yeah. Oh, Randy, Ron, you are going. And you'll be in the big car, won't you? Are you going? No, going to I'm R4? going to uh, this race in Illinois on the oval. Next week, I'll run just coupe at the R4. I don't feel like buying a bunch of go. motors. All so four I'm just going to go with the handout. Same bat time, same bat channel. Okay. Well, until next week, everybody have a good weekend. Be safe. Go win some races. Bye, Walker. Ah. Is that how you told your sister Bye, to boys. at the airport? Oh, I didn't wave. The kinky wave. I didn't go. <laughs> I didn't go. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I, go. I was had to sleep for class. I couldn't go. You were in your the room. Queen wave. You were so upset. Hugging oh, her yeah, pillow. I was so sad. All right. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs>